Today I'm going to give you an overview of a commercial install I did of an N-phase solar system on a three-story building and also a five-story building. We're going to start here at the main solar disconnect and work our way both directions. First, we're going to work our way back to where the power comes into the building at. Uh, it's a 200 amp feed, so everything's in 2 inch EMT, but it's going to come back into one of our house panels first and we just hooked it right onto the bottom set of lugs inside that panel. Very tight fit, but everything fit just fine. I'm also going to be pointing out to you some labeling that you need to have in place uh, to meet code. And I'll just kind of point those out and you can take a peek. But it goes back to its meter that feeds that panel. It's a house B is what the name of the panel was. You can see our yellow label right there. From there, it goes through the bus bars to the main disconnect. Got our sticker once again there. And then the power comes in the building right there. So now we'll go back to that main solar disconnect. And you'll see a couple things right here. On this main solar disconnect there are a couple stickers and I'll try to put a link in the description or pictures in there something just so you can actually see these a little bit better or you can pause the video and take a look for yourself uh, but one of the big ones is is the actual top sticker that is saying that it's the main solar disconnect that sticker is reflective and the purpose of that is for if the fire department needs to come in to shut off the solar system and it is dark because they've already killed power to the building their flashlights will highlight that sticker so they know exactly where to go. So there's a point to that. Uh, and there's also just the stickers down low on some warnings and just some specs on the system of what it's all rated at. And that can be used by them, but it's more or less just kind of used for, you know, electrical purposes. Someone comes in to add something, uh, it kind of tells them what the system is rated for. Now in this three-story building, the inspectors were perfectly fine with just having this disconnect right next to the main disconnect which is right to the right uh, usually that is outside so they can shut it off in, a, in the event of a fire or something like that uh, this was kind of a unique situation um, basically all we had to do was give the fire department a key right into that parking garage this is all in a lower parking garage by the way but we had to get them a key so they had access into the main electrical room it's literally right outside of a ramp so two doors 10 foot in the building you're at the main disconnect uh, so since the main disconnect was on the inside the main solar disconnect could be just right next to it and be just fine now on the other building that you actually saw at the start of this video that's the five-story building now that one the main disconnect is on the exterior of the building out back along with all these other meters for that case, we still had a disconnect on the inside of the building. It was a breakered disconnect, not the fused knife handle style that you're seeing here. It was a breaker one, but it had a shunt trip on it. So we actually ran just a small emergency shutdown button all the way out to where the main disconnect for the building was at. So if they hit that, they don't have to go inside to hit the main solar disconnect. It would actually throw that disconnect for you. So a very important thing to point out, if you're doing a commercial project, you're going to want to check into that because they're gonna want a way to shut off that power from the outside. Okay, so now we're gonna work our way out of this electrical room all the way up to where the solar panels are at. And once again, it's just a bunch of two inch EMT, it's just gonna go up and come out of the room right there. Now on this pipe, you have to have stickers every so many foot. I want to say it's around 10 foot, but you have to have stickers saying it's part of the solar system. So you're going to get a big old stack of those stickers and you're going to go through them like crazy. So order extras and it's going to come all the way over just to this junction box because right there we were able to find a set of common walls that got us all the way to the roof. This is just our rain rated panel up on the roof but you're gonna see right where we pop up from the, that common wall which is right there that comes up through it's properly sealed and all our EMT on the roof here you're using rain tight fittings and once again you still have to have those codes the uh, code stickers it does not matter that it's on a roof and it's preferable if everything comes into the bottom of the panel just for water purposes we got a sticker on this panel door once again, just for code purposes to tell you that it is part of the solar system. You have to identify anything that you have here that it is part of the solar. 
Inside the panel, we have more code related stickers. So again, I'll try to put something in the links for you so you can actually see those. But there's a bunch of three phase breakers here. And you can pause the video if you'd like, but the concept of this is each string of solar panels. And on this roof, there's about 136 panels. On the five story building, we were more up around 180 panels, but they're three phase feeds. So 10 gauge wire is just gonna head out the bottom of this panel. You see this all in a second, but out the one inch conduit and it's gonna meet up with each string. And then I'll point out the trunk cable, but from here it's just this breaker, 10 gauge wire out to the panels. And then you can also see on the side here, these are just some surge protection. They just tap into one of the breakers just to help protect against lightning strikes or anything like that. A little view inside the panel. We just had the copper, those 200 amp feeds are coming up to feed this panel. So since this is a grid tie system, it has to see power for all the inverters on each of the solar panels to operate. So realistically, you have a 200 amp panel up on this roof and you could add an outlet off of this panel just for a convenience outlet and it's gonna work. It's not like all the power is coming from the solar. There is power coming from downstairs in that parking garage up to this panel. The difference is, is when those solar panels start making their power, it's actually shoving the power the opposite way and feeding back onto the grid. And you do need that special meter in order for this to work. If you have the regular meter in and you start doing this, it's not gonna know the power was going the other direction and it's gonna start charging your bell. Now, little surprise when you start getting up on these roofs, you're gonna encounter some wasps. You see that little keyhole back there? That should have been sealed up. That is where he's coming in at. Uh, a little bit of aluminum tape or even a KO plug, a weather tight KO plug would be preferable. One three phase breaker picks up that surge protector because each surge protector is only a single phase 208. You don't need a three phase 208 surge protector. It's just going to be that and you just common the one on the middle lug there. And that green ground strap right there, that is not hooked up. That is on purpose. If you did that, that would bond that case. We're keeping those grounds in neutral separate. Everything in this panel also, you have to make sure we still separated our neutrals and ground. So they are not to connect back here. It's just like any other sub panel that you would install. Okay, coming out of the bottom of that panel, you can see our one inch runs, stickers on all the pipes every 10 foot. They head out to the far set of the array over there, but we're gonna first take a look at the closer array just to see the concept. Everything is stood off the roof with roof standoffs. And when you get over, each array has this junction box where you can just meet up with everything. So that second seal tight coming back out of that box is just to pick up the other set of panels right here. This little group is only 16 panels, so it's only one circuit breaker that is picking up these 16 panels. You got your grounding coming back out of that box. It's a number six ground. It just has to be lugged onto that system one time, and you can actually see it right there hooked to the bottom of the panel. Everything else is considered to be grounded because the system was designed for that. It's UL listed that if you install it appropriately, you don't have to run that ground to each panel. It is considered grounded when you use their system. So going out to the, the further array, we've got our three one inch pipes heading out to these panels. Now each one of those pipes is actually has two three phase circuits in them because there's that much panels out here. I'll put in the description how many panels can be on one breaker, on one trunk cable, because there is a limit to how much you can put on there, depending on the size of your panels and the size of your um, micro grid, grid tie inverter. So you are able to fit you know, two circuits in each pipe. So you'll see when these pipes come up to that same junction box that we just saw, there's gonna be another seal tight coming out of there. That's just to go on even further to the next set. So there's a set of wires in there that just skip that box completely. Now you can also see the inverter right there. That's the micro inverter. It's a grid tie inverter from Enphase. Each panel has their own inverter. Uh, the little roof chairs that we use there that have the weighted blocks on them, those were engineered and designed 
to be weighted down. It's just, they're all aluminum, basically the same as Unistrut. Uh, so the inverter easily mounted right to it. Uh, came with some stainless hardware for you to mount everything too, so you wouldn't have any rusting happening. But everything went very, very smooth. You pound on these clips right onto the top of those chairs. And then when you set your panel down in there, you run a screw down and it will actually lock the panel in place. As for the weighting with the blocks, that was designed by an engineer. You do not want to do that one yourself. Uh, whoever's supplying those does have the means to figure that out because this is a flat roof and it has to be designed for wind load. So they do not fly off of the roof. And some chairs will have four blocks on them. Some will only have two, but they will give you a print that will actually show you what you're supposed to do. On this, you can see that a better view of that grid tie inverter. It's just one bolt just holds that on to that unistrut that's part of that chair. Out of that grid tie inverter, there is a set of leads that will hook up to your panel. A uh, big code one that the inspector is going to look at on that is that you don't have any of these wires laying on the ground. You can't, or on the rooftop. They cannot be touched and they have to be held up and in. Uh, the other connector coming out of there is going to plug right into the trunk cable. And the trunk cable literally just zip ties across the across that entire run. And you actually order that, that trunk cable depending on which way that you want to mount your solar panel. So if you mount them in landscape, uh, they have a certain spacing. If you mount them in portrait mode, they have another spacing. But everything just clicks in very simple. It actually has a little tool that for you to unclip them. The trunk cable that you see is made for three phase power feeding back to that panel. If you remember, we had three phase breakers in there. Now these inverters only put out single phase 208. So how this works is this, that connector on that trunk cable will pick up phases A and B. When you go down to the next connector, it's picking up B and C. Then when you go to the third one, it's picking up A and C, and it's just gonna keep doing that order over and over again, and that's how these inverters pick up. Because you gotta remember, it does not matter where these inverters are hooking onto, they're gonna, they're gonna match the frequency wave and operate correctly. Now here was a big problem we noticed after a while. There was a pizza place that ended up going into the commercial space on the first floor. It's a wood-fired pizza place, and on my return trip for what I had to do this day, I noticed it is absolutely dirty. This is gonna be a problem, but honestly, it's not, avoid it's not avoidable for this customer, but you can see everything on the roof here and how dirty it is and how much it gets on the panels. They're gonna to start to see a reduction in how much power these panels are putting out over time, but that is not good. I mean, to fight that, they're honestly just gonna to have to come up and clean the panels. Okay, so now for the data side of all this, there is, this is the reason why I actually had to come back here. The main hub of this that actually talks to the panels and keeps track of everything for you, and when you log in on your phone to see what your panels are doing, it wasn't communicating very well with all of the panels. So right now it was down in the electrical room, and I'm gonna show you first how, how it got to the electrical room, and then I'll have to show you how I had to rerun it up to the roof. So here's the main phone room. It wasn't too far away from the electrical room, but it took a little bit of working to get it over there and I was able to use a little bit of what we already had in place uh, for the first location that we had the end phase controller at. Now it's not necessarily pretty, but not all that is mine, so you can't give me too much guff about it, but there's just a little tiny router there and that's what we actually had to plug into because um, you just basically need internet for your end phase controller and it goes up and over we had a couple of chases through a wall there that then go down because this building actually feeds the building across the parking lot so we first went under and you can see it on the far wall there it just goes under the concrete and right back up and comes out of there so that was my pathway to get closer to that electrical room and I just did a small three-quarter pipe right out the top and headed straight down for the, to that electrical room to pull my Cat6 cable through. Now here is how I had to change it to get a Cat6 cable up to the roof. And this time I had to use a, I went with a more specialized UV rated, uh, weather tight 
Cat 6 cable just because it was going to be going up onto the roof. So this is the route that I had to take to get that cable up there. It basically comes out of that same router. It's going to hit where all the other data cables are making their way up to all the units. Because on each floor there's a closet. So it just comes up and over. We hit a junction box to pop up into a mail room. And the mail room is dirty. So just to warn you. But right there there's just a couple of pipes stubbing up. And this is what is actually feeding a lot of cable and data up to the individual closets for all the units. But we come across and we basically hit up here. From here it's a straight shot up through a closet that is the same on each floor. Now this closet actually looks pretty good and clean, but I mean that's where the owners are going to have some of their junk. And it's going to come up this chase right here. That box there just goes off to feed all the units. But now we got to get up to the third floor, which is a lot messier. But from here is where I had access up onto the roof and I had to start making some holes up and get my fish tape through. Little peek of how we get to each of the rooms. But back in here, got a hole saw up through the roof and I had to fish tape. Now, luckily, after the construction was done, a satellite provider came and put some random holes up in the ceiling. So I just used one of theirs and that's their pipe that was already broken apart. So I'm not taking credit for that, but I got to basically add a pipe alongside all those other uh, power pipes just to get over to my panel. We're going to put a box on that panel. So here's that weather rated cat six. And I just kind of fed it from the middle part because I could easily pull up to the roof from here. And then after I get my length on the roof, it wasn't too much just to cut off a length and shove it down into the basement. Now I got my pipe added right here. Now you're going to see a couple things that are, very special they did not have any ceiling on their pipe very well um, so we want to make sure to seal all of that off and very important is that drip loop if any water comes in on there it will actually drip off on that loop rather than wanting to go in that pipe so it's just a little extra protection we're gonna seal everything back off so now you can see that we just apply some duct seal that's gonna keep everything just kind of sealed off uh, so there's no water penetration shoved all that in there really tight and around that wire and into the pipe even a little bit now we got a new box mounted onto it now this part took me a second to figure out but <laughs> and it'll kind of throw you for a loop because I was trying to figure out if I needed to cut the cord that was normally plugged into the wall but you do not have to there's a little slide door right here when you slide this door there's actually just some connectors for regular wire for you to hook up. And now you're wondering, well, how to hook it up? It's right above it on the panel. You would not believe that it actually took me a minute to find that. So from here, I basically just mounted a, a weather type box on the opposite side of our panel. All right, here you can see just some duct seal. We're just going to use this to seal up those two conduits because if you don't, moisture is just going to have a way of getting inside of this cabinet. So you're gonna to wanna to push it real hard around the wires and the opening. And there you go, all sealed up. You can see the lights on there that is communicating that that CAT6 was installed correctly. Then we got the cover all put back on. Everything's all sealed up nice and tight. You can just see we just added it right to the piece of strut right behind the panel. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.